Hey you! Yeah, you. Do you keep asking a non-gamer to play with you, but they keep refusing, leaving you sad and crying all alone? Well then, I have a video for you. This is it. This is, uh, the video. Now, some of you might be thinking, if I want a non-gamer to play with me, I'll just pull up around a Valo and toss them a controller. <laughs> <laughs> and to that I say, if the non-gamer is able to pick up and play a game like Valo, then the problem isn't that you want to play with a non-gamer, it's that you aren't playing games that they find enjoyable or are comfortable playing. <sighs> Let me explain. It takes skill to play games. Playing a high-intensity game with a bunch of complicated mechanics isn't something that's engraved into you at birth. It's a learned skill. So if you grab a controller and hand it to a non-gamer, and they're able to fully function in a game like that, then they're not a non-gamer. So maybe it's not that they don't like to play games, or they're not comfortable with them, but instead it's they don't like the games that you play, or how you play them. Or maybe they just don't like you. And I can't help with that. Maybe like a therapist can. Like a deep introspective look at yourself. But for the people still around, I can help you reel in a non-gamer so you finally have someone to play with. Maybe you're asking how you can trust that I have the know-how to do this, but I promise you that I'm the guy for the job and I can prove it. Hello? Hello. Um, are you ready? I guess so. Alright, I'm gonna ask you the question. Okay. <laughs> Would you say that you play more games now than you did before you met me? Uh... No? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, no. But you don't play more now? I don't think so. Like, I, I played a lot with my brother growing up, so... It wasn't really a big difference getting a boyfriend. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, okay, let's move on. Oh, there's more than one question? <laughs> Just one more. Okay. Do you think that this makes me an expert in getting people to play more games than before? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. Uh... <laughs> Anyways, let's get into this. One of the best ways to have a non-gamer play a game with you is to have them play a game with you. Now. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but hear me out. It can't just be a game you're currently playing. It needs to be a game that is simple with not too hard to learn concepts and controls, and that is fun to play together. I searched wide and far and deep. I found the perfect game. It's Simonob! I mean, look at this game. It's cute, it's simple, it's easy, it's cute, it's cheap, it's so flippin' cute! <sighs> okay, uh, what was I saying? Uh, right. Perfect game. Time to justify. Let's start. Firstly, the controls are simple. Wanna move left? Press left. Wanna move right? Press right. Wanna jump? Press up, or down. Why up or down? Well, because the game will have you change orientation, so if pressing up making you jump in a downward direction is too much for your caveman brain to handle, they've got you covered. Press down instead. Super easy, right? Remember five minutes ago when I said gaming is a skill? 
Controls and intuitively being able to know how to use them is part of that skill. For someone who's never touched a game, they need a control scheme that they can memorize and internalize without issue, and the game Ibn Ab provides that. Want to know what else it provides? Simple and addicting gameplay, with very little repercussions for doing things incorrectly. For the most part, this is a bare-bones platformer, with the gimmick of being only co-op and the change in direction of gravity. Progress is shown in a simple-to-understand way. Move right equals make progress. Doesn't need explaining. As you play, you'll come across simple enemies that look like black, spiky half-circles, with a white crystal on the other half of the circle. It's easy to understand to avoid them, and even if you don't collect the crystal pieces that you get by killing these thick boys, it doesn't really stop you from progressing. But, the most important part? If, for some reason, the non-gamer decides to take a face full of spikes, they respawn immediately. So do you. Pretty much in the exact same screen you both died on. There's really no loss of progress, which means the person you're playing with never really needs to feel bad about dying and learning. They aren't making you go through minutes of a level every single time they choose to forget that a spiky ball means bad. They're just immediately faced with the same enemy or puzzle, there's no real loss, and it's all the more reason that they should feel comfortable to take the time to experiment and get better and learn. Also, before I forget, there isn't some sort of grand story that continuously interrupts your game. The game just lets you play. There's no real waiting, or load times, no cutscenes, no reason to be pulled out of the game and what you're doing. The less interruptions between the gameplay slash learning experience for the non-gamer, the better. Their attention is always on the game, progressing, building their skills, and their confidence in them. If every time you kill an enemy, everything stopped and a narrator said, Spiky Ted had a family. He was only trying to get by on his 9 to 5. His wife left him to take care of little Ted Jr. all on his own, after she decided she wanted to be with large, flat-headed trapezoid George instead because... He doesn't explode into a bunch of crystals every time he gets a light spank on the behind. He's a real anthropomorphic shape with legs. You wouldn't understand. And then... I don't care. And this is what I mean. The game doesn't just pull you out of what you're doing, which is a very, very good thing. <sighs> Poor Spiky Ted. And lastly, the main benefit, but also the main downfall of the game. It's that you have to play this game together. Every time the non-gamer runs face first into a black fuzzball and dies because they forgot that up met jump, you're gonna be there. And it's up to you how you deal with it. And that's what I mean by it being a benefit and a downfall. If you're there, you're patient, you laugh it off, or you make it a fun experience for both you and the person you're playing with, you're both going to have a great time, guaranteed. But, if every time a mistake is made, you make a show of how bad they are, you sigh, or you get angry, then you're not helping your case. I'll refer back to the beginning of this video. If you are acting like a butt, it doesn't matter what game you play. Unfortunately, you're the problem. Can't blame two semicircles with legs for your bad attitude. If you aren't that type of person, you're gonna be totally fine. The fact that this is a cooperative only experience will only make the other person like this game, and in turn, gaming as a whole, more. It's also perfect because you'll have very serious tells as to whether they want to keep playing, since whenever they want to play they're going to come to you and ask, they can't really play the game by themselves, and since the game does slowly ramp up in difficulty the further along you get, if you ever get to a point that's too complicated for the non-gamer, or there's like a puzzle they can't really wrap their head around that needs to get cleared, then before they get too frustrated, but of course after they give it a good try for themselves, they can just jump on top of you and let you clear it for them. It's a win-win. So, 
Next time you want to get a non-gamer to play a game with you, ask them to play Ibn Ob. Be patient, make it a good experience, and you'll live ever after. Can't really say happily. People are more complicated than that.